did I take an Ambien last night? And maybe forgot about injecting the entire cartridge of Genotropin, the full 36 IUs. Vigor, Steve here. Have you ever woken up the day after a cheat meal or refeed or a full-blown cheat day even? And you go to the bathroom to wash your face, only to look up in the mirror and you can't even recognize yourself? That's how bloated you are. That's how much water has accumulated in your head. And now it's all round. You're reminded of the Michelin Man or the Stay Puft the Marshmallow Man. That's how bad it is. And now you're even wondering, did I take an Ambien last night? And maybe forgot about injecting the entire cartridge of Genotropin, the full 36 IUs. Maybe that's the explanation of why your face is dead around. But actually, it's just the cheat meal. And you've been cheating in a way that promoted water retention. So this is video is for you. I'm going to explain you how to prevent this from happening going forward. And if you're wondering if that's even possible, there's your evidence. A nice streamlined face. Even though I had two cheat meals yesterday and a refeed and a couple snacks in between, I did not behave in the slightest, but I incorporated some of the things that we discuss in this video. And before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I made several videos about how to cheat meal or refeed in a structured fashion. I'll link them at the end of this video. Feel free to give those a watch when we're done with this one. There's four things that I want to address in this video. Your electrolyte intake during the week and while you're having a refeed or cheat day. Your estradiol levels throughout the week, obviously, when you're taking performance enhancing drugs. The renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system and activity. So let's start there. Let's start by activating the lymphatic system. I already mentioned the role of the lymphatic system in several previous videos. So let me give you guys a brief rundown. The lymphatic system is part of the immune system and it returns some of the fluid, which ends up in the extracellular or interstitial space that doesn't return through the cardiovascular system. Now the cardiovascular system has the pump in form of a heart, allowing it to circulate but approximately 15% of the fluid which exits the cardiovascular system into the interstitial space has to be returned to the heart through the lymphatic system. Now, in order to return this interstitial fluid to the cardiovascular system, you need to activate the lymphatic system through movement. And this is particularly important on the days that you're having a cheat meal or a refeed or a full-blown cheat day is because there's so much turnover of this interstitial fluid that without activation of the lymphatic system, this interstitial fluid will build up. There's a lot of delivery of micronutrients, vitamins, electrolytes, minerals. There's a lot of delivery of glucose, amino acids, fats. All of that is getting dumped into the skeletal muscle and the surrounding tissue. So the best thing you can do right after your cheat meal, you pay the bill, you go walk around, walk it off. You will prevent a fluid from building up, but all of the nutrients will still get delivered allowing for a sufficient amount of glycogen retention for a couple days after this cheat meal. The water won't be there as long as you walk around right after your cheat meal or in between meals while you're refeeding. We can take going to a theme park, for example. You go to Disney World or uh, Universal Studios. Probably not the best food there, but everybody remembers a day at the theme park. The next day, you're freaking lean, full and dry because you've been walking around, standing in line for particular rides, and it doesn't matter how many hot dogs or crappy meals you eat at the theme park, the next day you're significantly leaner and fuller because you've been walking around, you've been activating the lymphatic system, and you're probably slightly dehydrated, obviously, because the water is so expensive over there, um, but it's mostly from the movement, right? Keep that in mind. When you're having a refeed or cheat meal or full-blown cheat day, just do a couple minutes of walking after each session of eating that will mitigate a lot of the fluid retention by activating the lymphatic system. And then the next thing you can look into is your electrolyte intake, particularly sodium intake, which should be high throughout the week leading into the cheat meal or refeed day. This way, with higher sodium intake, your aldosterone levels are sufficiently downregulated and there's no chance that aldosterone will promote sodium retention when your electrolyte intake is going to be off on the day of your cheat day or refeed. If you have two cheat meals and a refeed in between, during your cheat meals, your sodium intake is going to be high. And then during your refeed meals, sodium intake is probably going to be low because it's mostly carbohydrates, which in most cases 
are much lower in sodium compared to your cheat meals. Now, during the week when your sodium intake is higher, again, it downregulates aldosterone. With proper hydration, you're always excreting the sodium. So you have minimal water retention at the end of the day during the week leading into the cheat meal. And as long as your sodium intake over the day is comparable or lower compared to during the week and your hydration is also comparable, there should be no way, really guys, there's no way that you're retaining water the day after your cheat meal because your aldosterone levels have been consistently low throughout the week and they will remain low while you're having a cheat meal and staying sufficiently hydrated. And again, you're managing your sodium intake during the week, you're managing your hydration during the week, the day after your cheat meal, you're just as dry. And if you are water retentive, it could be because you lost insulin sensitivity, you overcarbed, you had too many carbohydrates or too many carbs in combination with fats, which reduce insulin sensitivity by themselves, preventing proper storage of glucose glycogen in skeletal muscle, causing it to spill over into adipose tissue. If this happens to you, it just means you ate too many carbs or you manage your insulin sensitivity incorrectly. Again, keep a little bit of a log of what you eat on a week to week basis. And this way you can kind of pinpoint which foods work well for you and which foods certainly didn't work causing you to still be bloated even though you're managing your electrolyte intake and you're staying somewhat active on your refeed or cheat day. Estradiol plays a little bit of a role in water retention, albeit indirectly so through the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now again, we addressed aldosterone through high sodium intake throughout the week and proper hydration. Estradiol contributes slightly, so all you need to do is do your blood work and keep your estradiol levels somewhat in range. So whether that's 40 picograms per milliliter, 35, 30, 20, 15, from 20 downwards, you start to notice that you retain less and less and less water. You could alternatively look into a dihydrotestosterone derivative in the form of Mastron, Primabolin, or maybe even Proviron. Many people report that they over or hyper excrete and don't retain so much water after a cheat meal, which would otherwise be caused by slightly elevated estradiol levels. Again, it's not the full story. You can be lean while you have higher estrogen levels if and only if, if you don't overdo the cheat foods and don't lose insulin sensitivity. Again, there's a lot of contributing factors, but don't crush your estrogen because you want to stay lean after a cheat meal. One does not simply post-menopause crush their serum estradiol concentrations to mitigate a poorly designed refeed or cheat day. Yes, low estradiol will cause you to be less water retentive, but you ideally want to keep estradiol in its favorable ranges, let's say 25 to 40 picograms per milliliter, somewhat towards the middle top of the reference range, and then address this water retention with some of the other strategies which we'll discuss in this video. Again, estradiol potentiates water retention indirectly through the renin aldosterone angiotensin system. So if you modulate angiotensin with an angiotensin receptor blocker, for example, telmersartan, then you should not get water retentive from superphysiological levels of estradiol. So whether that's 40, 45, 55 picograms per milliliter, the inclusion of telmersartan mitigates some of the increased angiotensin, which is secreted when estradiol is high. Again, reducing estradiol to its favorable range is going to be ideal because you'll need less angiotensin receptor blockade to get a similar effect. Again, we're not using telmersartan to get less water retentive following a refeed or a cheat day. We're using telmersartan for all of its health benefits and in blood pressure management, and of course, prevent sodium reuptake or water reabsorption in the kidneys, which is one part of the angiotensin receptor blocking which occurs when you take telmersartan, whether that's 20 milligrams or 40 milligrams, you'll have to figure out the dose by yourself, depending on whatever else you're doing, right? Again, we're not taking telmersartan to mitigate water retention following a cheat meal, but, 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 it's a very welcome and I would say beneficial effect. Again, angiotensin receptor blockers decrease aldosterone, vasopressin and catecholamine levels. This reduces blood pressure overall. 
and also increases sodium and water excretion through the kidneys. So if your sodium intake is regulated, you're staying hydrated, preventing your blood pressure or blood volume from decreasing too much, causing a negative feedback system. If your estradiol is managed in its favorable range and you're taking an angiotensin receptor blocker, for example, telmosartan, again, very little chance, unless you're overdoing the carbohydrates, very little chance that you're water attentive the next day. Long story short, stay active after your cheat meal, stay hydrated, keep your electrolyte intake stable, keep your estradiol levels favorable, not too high, not too low, and consider an angiotensin receptor blocker in the form of telmersartan to help with sodium and water excretion, keep your blood pressure in range, and ultimately prevent you from getting water retentive the day after a cheat meal. Again, if you eat like an asshole, none of this is going to work. But if you do eat in a structured fashion, take it from me, the next day is a walk in the park. You don't get a heart attack when you look in the mirror. You're just as handsome as you were the day before. I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. Personalized advice, always available through consultations. You can find the rates in the consultation section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at vigorsteve. Have a look at my new workout clips channel, link down below. All my crazy sets are documented there. A front double bicep for the vigorous crew. No water retention in these cannons. My elbows are a little bit cracky, but well, that's just part of the game at this age, I guess. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video, hopefully bloat-free. See you guys then.